Yes, good afternoon. Welcome in. We begin always with Roman Harper and Tim Tebow. Uh, Tim, let's start with you because uh, certainly uh, Gator fans were really looking forward to a big time season. Where are they right now? Well, um, I think a lot are confused, a lot are hurt, a lot are trying to figure it out, and they're also trying to figure out where does that hope come from, and I think a lot of people are leaning towards that with DJ, um, but I think it really needs to start with the physicality of winning the battle up front on both sides of the football, and uh, you know, one of the phrases that we use here in Gainesville, and is in all types of weather, we all stick together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're, they're clapping right now, but we should actually be, be doing that. And um, I think a little bit better here. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting time, but I think this game is critical. Do I think Florida is a better football team than Texas A&M? I don't know. Probably not when you watch the film, but I don't know that this game is just about who's better. Obviously, that matters, but I think what also matters is the desperation that you play with. True. And I think Florida has to play with desperation. I think they have to cl coach with desperation. And I, I think both of these teams, it's pivotal. It is so important, both losing week one, having a chance to, to bounce back in an SEC game, um, with, especially with A&M having a little bit of an easier schedule in front of them. It's, this is pivotal for both teams, for both staffs. Um, but I think there's more pressure on Florida. And I also think because of that, they're going to play with more of a desperation. And I'm excited to see what that looks like. Roman. Paul, this team is exactly where I thought they'd be at. I thought they'd be one and one in this situation. So I'm not ready to hit the full-blown panic button. But they do have to win this game. Uh, it is that important. The schedule going forward is extremely tough. And I don't know how many wins you get if you don't get this win. If you don't get this win, where are they going to come from going forward? And so it, what it does, it, Tim, Pain, Tim paints a great picture in the fact of the mentality going forward. If you win this game, what it does for you confidence-wise, confidence what it does for the psyche of the players and the fans, because now we have a sense of hope, a sense of belief. And I'm with Tim. That comes with DJ Lagway. He is the quarterback for this University of Florida. And I will go out there flat out and say it. That is what needs to happen. If they want to win this game, he will have to have a day. And then on the other side, defensively, can you create a turnover? Yeah. That's one thing that's been lacking of this defense the last two years, and they have to be better than that. If they do that, they will win this game. Does DJ bring a lot of excitement and hope? Yes. Absolutely. And I am so excited. I think he's an incredible young football player, and I think he's even a better young man. Yes. I am so impressed with this young man. I'm so grateful he's a Gator. But let's also be honest. Their issue has not been the quarterback position. It's true. It is not. Like a lot of people want to point because it's the most important position and you could argue all of sports. But guess what? A different quarterback's not going to stop from getting hit in the mouth against Miami. A different quarterback couldn't have the offensive line block in the running game or run the football or, or get after Cam Ward or, or tackle somebody. It's not just on the quarterback, and it is an important position. And I love DJ. I also love Grand Mertz. The, the quarterback position has not, has not been the issue. And so we want to have hope around it, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about both of these guys. Grand Mertz, I believe he's going to be an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he's going to get drafted, but I think he's going to make a team. He's that good of a player, DJ does bring an awesome element, and he, I think he's got a chance to be an exceptional player. I'm so excited. But it also has to be all of the players around him on offense and defense and coaching staff that has to raise their level of play. Tim, what I don't understand, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Graham Marks. I don't know Wagway. Uh, but everywhere you go, it's, 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 I hear from fans, I hear from media people, it's like if Lagway doesn't start and play this game, then Florida has no chance, and I don't understand that. You, you've been there as a, as a young freshman. Can you explain to us why everyone is, has bailed out on, on Graham Mertz, who got hurt in the first game, um, for someone who is going to be great but may not be great yet? Well, it's easy to just point the fingers and say, if there's a different quarterback, it would be different. I think that's the easy out, yes. and I don't think it's the right out. Now, does I want to be honest, does DJ give a lot of hope? Should he play? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, he should be part of, the, part of this offense. He should be part of the team. He brings so, such an added um, dimension, and he brings hope. So critical, so important. But... Listen, either one of these guys, if they can't run the ball, if they can't separate a receiver, if they can't get pressure on the quarterback, like, listen, when you look at the film from the Miami game, 
Graham's getting hit in his face. Mm -hmm. They're not running the football. They didn't get after um, Cam Ward. They didn't make a lot of tackles. There are silly penalties on uh, on roughing the passer. There's so many other areas, and it's easy for us to just say, it's the quarterback. But that doesn't mean it's always true. There's a difference between perception and reality, and I think a lot of people just want to say that. But listen, that was not just on Graham Mertz on week one. It was on a lot of different people, and I think we need to paint an honest picture. And, and since I sat next to you on the plane coming down, you're, you're one of the people who was, who was saying that Lagway has to start and play, and, and I'm really curious why. Well, uh, I would answer that, that your question with more questions. Who has the better arm? Lagway. Who's bigger? Lagway. Who has the ability to be athletic and then when things break down can actually create and kind of nullify some of your weaknesses is DJ Lagway. So the only real thing that's going towards Graham Mertz is the experience factor sure. and the leadership factor. A lot factor. of experience. Right. And so I understand all that, but the only way to get experience is to play. And the thing that Lagway well, brings he, to I this mean, team he, is that he has the ability to elevate everybody else around him. He has the ability to make everybody else around him better. He has the ability to maybe, when you have a missed block, that he can step up and still get it on out there pretty good. So I think this team, because it has to play so desperate, sometimes when you have to do something you've never done before, you got to do something you've never done before. And that is going with the young guy, the young freshman, and trying to give this team a little shot or an injection in the arm to give them something to get them going because right now if we continue just to go down the same path we're going to end up with a lot of the same results and it's not a knock on Graham Mertz as much as it's just like but, but Tim I want you to explain though you, you have you, I don't I don't want to use the cliche with the coaches know best because frankly I've seen times when they really don't but in this case it seems like the experience does matter in a big game like this yeah it, at times, it really matters. Um, I, I think DJ's someone that can really handle the pressure. He's an incredibly poised, mature young man. But also, we have to understand, if it gets to a, a, in a game where it's in second and third and long and Florida can't run the ball, then Mike Elko is going to be dialing up so many different pressures that DJ has never seen before. It's not his fault. He is the future of Florida, and the future looks bright with him. But also, can you, how can you handle and encourage and prepare for the future and prepare this young man to handle that yep. without giving him all of the pressure right. all at right. once? Right. And I think there's a balance with letting him play, letting him gain experience. And, and I do agree with Roman on so many levels yeah. that he is exciting, he is mature, he is poised, he's athletic, he's got a chance to be a superstar. But also, you put him in a situation where second and third and long, and you have this A&M defense, like, this A&M defense is not the reason they lost to Notre Dame. That was all on – this defense is a really good defense, and Mike right. Elko is one of the best to do it. And he will be dialing up a lot of pressures that DJ has never seen. And so to put all of that on him at once, I think that's really where you have to step back and say, Especially is that the, the wisest is that yeah. the wisest thing to do? Now, if, it's, if he's playing and it's going well, can you give him more and more and more? Absolutely. But I think it's important to look at it and balance it. What is best for the young man? At the same time, what is best for the team? You understand all that, all that don't you? I do. And I still say you got sure. to roll him out there. Because I'm with him. If you don't. I'm going to be very careful tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I know as a coach, I can't lose the game. Correct. How do I get to a win? And as well as I, I'm not worried about whether the fans and I'm not worried about whether Roman Harper thinks I should do something. And I respect that. But. I know. I just okay, know what this. do you guys think? Lagway, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're on my side on this one, Paul. I got this for you. I got it. Whatever wins the game is called DJ Lagway. So this is what it's going to have to take. You you have to do certain things. Well, and some weekend down you, here. You, it's just and Tim's so correct on how you don't want to just roll him out there and throw no. him to the wolves. You don't want to do that. But at the same time. If you don't do that, if it's not today, then when? Well, it's a long season. Anyway, it, it's not a long season no, for everybody. No, yeah, also, yeah, yeah, it. It's not like they're going up against a defense that has weaknesses. This defense is really good. They're so not I as good in the back seven. They're not as good in the back seven. But what do they do really well? Well, they do disguise. They, they do just, some other they things. Just, they but you got it really but, well. But no quarterback's good on second and 14. No it, quarterback's good. No quarterback's great on third and 18. But also, it's even harder for a quarterback that hasn't done it. Yeah. So should he play? 
Absolutely. Should you put him in positions to constantly get him better yes. and gain experience and gain confidence? Yes. It is, but it's really hard if you're in second and third and long and you've never seen the looks. Graham Mertz has seen every look. True. I'm not saying that DJ shouldn't play. I do think he should play. I think he should play a lot, and I think he is the future of Florida. I'm just saying you want to also take care of your future True. and not throw them to the wolves too fast. There's just a balance in that that I think is really hard um, to find where is that perfect balance in it.